Hey guys, it's Sweet Musings here, and thank you for tuning in to another video. Sorry that it took a while for this video to come out. I was actually in Mexico for the past six months, and June was a really busy month trying to finalize my plans before coming back to the States. So I just want to say thank you for your patience and the overwhelming support for my previous two videos. I read through all your comments and feedback, and they were all really encouraging and helpful for me to keep improving my content. So if you would like to continue supporting this channel, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get started. So a lot of you guys suggested that I make a potential guide after I uploaded my previous video on scrolling. That video turned out to be longer than I wanted because there's literally so much to cover in so little time. The potential system is just as complex as a scrolling system or if not more. So I decided to make a three part series on potentials that will each cover the best potential lines you want to be aiming for in your weapons, armors, and accessories. For part one of the series, I'll cover weapons, so let's get started. So you might have seen the acronym WSE or SWE tossed around here and there, and you might have wondered what it stands for. Does it mean whatsoever? Software engineers? <laughs> well, nice try. But in the context of MapleStory, WSE or SWE, whatever you want to call it, stands for Weapon, Secondary, and Emblem. These three items make up the core of all your equipment because they give the most significant stat increases potential-wise in comparison to every other type of gear. This is because your primary weapons, secondary weapons, and emblems can get exclusive potential lines that raise some of the most important stats in the game that affect the final damage calculation, such as percent attack magic attack and percent ignore enemy defense lines. And your primary and secondary weapons can even get percent boss damage lines. Any other potential line on your weapon is pretty useless with the exception of percent damage lines that are useful for only training. I'll explain more later as to why it's not as good. To find out which potential lines are the best for our WSC, we want to optimize the potential lines on our weapon, secondary, and emblem to give us the maximum benefits from our stat lines. Percent boss damage, percent attack, percent IED are all affected by diminishing returns, meaning the more of it you have, the less efficient it is. So optimizing our WSC potential lines will help us achieve the most optimal DPS. To simply break it down, try to get anywhere from 93 to 96% final IED the most percent boss damage lines that you can get on your main potential lines, and the rest of the lines should be as much percent attack or magic attack you can get. The reason why I'm putting IED as a priority here is because it has a significant impact on how much damage you do to endgame bosses that have 300% PDR, like Lotus, Damien, Lucid, and so on. PDR stands for percent damage reduction, and the IED stat lets us ignore some of this PDR from bosses. For example, if we have 93% final IED, then we'll ignore 93% of the total 300% PDR, meaning our final damage will be reduced by 21%. And the reason why I said final IED is because there are other effects that increase our IED that don't show up in our stat window, like fifth job boost nodes or skills that already have built-in PDR, like a lot of dual blade skills. If we want to be dealing our full maximum damage, that means we need 100% IED. However, that doesn't mean we should try to get as much percent IED lines first. This is because of the way percent IED is calculated in MapleStory. IED does not add up linearly. Instead, every new source of IED only applies to the enemy defense that is not yet ignored. So, for example, if you have 30% IED from our superior Golic set, and then roll 30% IED on your secondary, it doesn't add up to 60. The second additional 30% IED only applies to the 70% left over defense that the enemy has after the first 30% IED got applied. So 30% of 70% is 21%. The total from these two sources will then add up to 51%. So if we focus too much on getting as much percent IED on our WSC, we'll be missing out on a lot of percent boss damage and percent attack or magic attack we could be getting. Balance of all three stats is very key here. If you're struggling to have enough IED, the most common ways you can raise it is through legion bonuses, link skills, monster codex, <laughs> I mean the non-existent familiar system and hyperstats. I'll include an IED calculator in the description below so that you can find out what your actual final IED looks like. If you utilize all these bonuses well, you might even be able to get away with not needing any IED potential lines and go straight for getting as much percent boss damage and percent attack or magic attack. And speaking of which, the reason why I previously said you should prioritize getting as much percent boss damage lines you can get on your main potential lines is because 1% attack equates to about 3% boss damage. So 40% boss damage will be better than 12% attack, and 30% boss damage will be better than 9% attack. 
since the percent boss damage added from legendary bonus potential lines are only 18% for the prime line and 12% for the secondary lines, it's only worth to get percent boss damage lines on your main potential on your weapons and secondary. So usually a perfect 3 line potential on primary and secondary weapons would look like 2 lines of percent boss damage and 1 line of attack or magic attack. Since emblems can't get percent boss damage, the best lines would be 3 line attack and for every bonus potential, 3 lines of percent attack is the best. People usually don't like to see ID on primary and secondary weapons because you can still get ID lines on your emblem which is untradeable and you can replace that line with extra boss damage. Now just a disclaimer, in reboot, going for 3 lines of percent attack over 2 line boss damage and 1 line attack on your primary and secondary weapon is actually better. This is because of the percent damage buff that exists exclusively to the reboot server. It gives you plus 1% damage for every 2 levels, so that means at level 200, the buff will naturally give you 100% damage. Now this is where I'll explain why getting percent damage lines on your WSC is not as good. Percent boss damage and percent damage are added additively against bosses. So both are identical against bosses. 20% damage is identical to 20% boss damage in all circumstances against bosses with the difference that damage percent also works for mobs and alters the stat display. Since you get 100% damage at level 200 in reboot, having too many percent boss damage lines would be less optimal from diminishing returns compared to getting more percent attack lines. And even in normal servers, if percent boss damage and percent attack are identical against bosses, it makes a lot more sense to try going for boss damage lines that give anywhere from 20-40% to boss damage versus 9-12% to damage lines. For normal servers, having 300 plus percent boss damage will still be optimal and for reboot, anywhere in the 200 to 250 percent boss damage range is optimal. You can actually easily get over 200 percent boss damage from a lot of different sources without having a single line of boss damage on your primary and secondary weapons. Hopefully I covered most of the bases on weapon potentials and if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and comment below any questions or feedback you might have. Additionally, if you'd like to stay up to date on the future potential guides I'll be releasing, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you could be the first one to see the next video. Happy mapling!